Hello, today I'm going to talk about the Solos Embedded Velocity and Position Profile Engine. This is actually one of our latest features that we've added into our firmware, and I'm going to show you how it works, what are the differences between this control method technology and conventional methods in the market, and how you can actually take advantage out of it for various types of applications, especially position and velocity controlling applications. So basically, the engine that I'm talking about is built on top of a technology which is called ST Curve technology. We offer both time-based and time-optimal version of that for position and also for velocity controlling applications. Later on, I'm going to go deeper into the details, but for now, let's talk a little bit about how actually position or speed controlling is done in our conventional servo drives with a method that is called PVT, standing for position, velocity, and time. So in a conventional servo drive, you have actually the user on the, uh, let's say, the most exterior side of this diagram. You have a host computer or a host PC or a, a embedded system that is uh, communicating through a data line, which is shown here, to a servo drive. On the host side, you have th this uh, engine that computes all the points for the servo drive to follow to have a certain trajectory, which we call it PVT encoder. So in this PVT encoder, you have to actually provide the, the algorithm that you want to create the trajectory with, which can have different namings like trapezoidal, which is the simplest one, S-curve, S-T-curve, and other types like minimum jerk tra trajectories. And once you've done that part, you need to send all the points to the servo drive one by one. And the servo drive has a unit inside which is called PVT decoder or maybe other names that basically interpolates between all these points that you send from the host to the servo drive through a function that is shown here. It's a basically a mathematical function of order three or four that connects these points together. So you can see in this image, for instance, we show uh, uh, with dots, all the points that the host computer is sending and interpolated, let's say, result inside the servo drive. So basically, if you want to go to, from point zero to any point that is shown here, you need to create all these dot points in the host computer and you need to send them with, a, with an orderly fashion and uh, in a time deterministic fashion to the servo drive so it can interpolate in between these two and it can create the, let's say, the smooth position profile tracking for your velocity profile tracking. There are problems with this uh, algorithm. The first problem is, uh, as you can see here, for every trajectory from the beginning till the end, the host computer has to keep sending all these points. And literally, for a practical application, these points are from hundreds of points to thousands of points per second. So basically, you are going to occupy the data line that is shown here, especially if it's shared between various servo drives a lot during this operation. The other problem is for those who are not experienced in these kind of applications will be the programming of this part, the PVT encoder. So this part is a heavily mathematical part that you have to compute all those points. Beside all the math involved, you need to send them completely in the right time, in the right moment, and handling these kind of applications in environments like Windows environment, Linux environment will be difficult because time is very critical between sending the points and, uh, let's say, providing all the points for the servo drive. Thus, for uh, making such an application, you need to write an extensive uh, program covering all the aspects of the asynchronous communications and all of that, that is pretty much difficult for those, especially those that are not experienced in these kind of things. And the other problem with these methods is that in the servo drive, at the end of the day, you need to interpolate between these two points. So every two points that is provided by the uh, encoder or at the hot side will be interpolated in between because, for example, the servo drive works at 2,000 hertz per second, the uh, position controlling loop, and the host is working, let's say, by 100 hertz. So between each point, you need to interpolate every time that you run the position controlling, a certain amount of points, and all of them are approximated points. They are not 
accurate or precise points and they are all uh, computed based on this uh, uh, equation that you can see here so for some server drive this is a uh, order three equation for the rest is fourth or fifth order but at the end of the day it's all about interpolation which is uh, providing you non-accurate points so uh, before talking about the technology of solar i also need to elaborate a bit more about this notion of sd curve motion profile technology and what is it so basically uh, here i'm going to show you uh, let's say the notion of a sticker for a position controlling applications the same applies for velocity controlling so here basically uh, as you can see here in this position uh, let's say diagram here uh, shown uh, in in any application that you want to go from a point to the other point which are shown here with point zero and the point p as a target position you want your server drive or your uh, let's say position controller to behave in a way that you don't have a lot of jerky motion or let's say radical uh, reaction to the user input and in order to have that you need to kind of behave the controller so for that purpose to have a, a let's say a position profile trajectory like this one that you can see here with a very soft uh, take off and soft landing you need to take care of a lot of things for instance with SD curve technology, which provides you all of that, not only you can have a very smooth uh, position profile between two points, you can have very smooth velocity profile at the same time, you can have a very smooth acceleration profile, and most importantly, you will have a continuous and a smooth jerk profile, which is actually what you're going to see in your mechanical system as some sort of vibrations or maybe irrational behavior during the motion. So the more and the better you can control the jerk, the higher quality will be your motion. So before everything, I, I'd rather to explain a bit about the basic architecture of a motor controller. And so I can explain you later how the, this uh, motion profile engine is kind of combining to this and how it actually works in conjunction with all the rest of the components in this system. So here is a, a bit of a scary looking uh, diagram that you can see here, but don't worry, it's pretty much... Uh, uh, very simple diagram. So here is the diagram of a controlling of a, let's say, uh, a brushless or a three-phase model under field oriented control. You can see here at the at the very right side I have the motor, and all the rest of this diagram is actually inside the servo drive or inside the motor controller. Most of these blocks right now for us are not important. The only part that we are interested in is this side of the story, which are the controllers. So basically. In field oriented control, we at least are having four different type controllers. We have the torque controller and the direct current controller. We have the speed controller and position controller. And for our purpose today, our focus is going to be only on the top side of this diagram, which is the torque controller, the speed controller, and position controller. You can see in this diagram, we have torque controller very close to the motor, so providing and controlling the torque of the motor in the fastest possible way and with the highest, let's say, uh, update rate. Then we have a speed controller and position controller on the other side that are taking care of the velocity control, if you need to control the velocity, or if you're controlling the position, taking care of the position controlling, speed controlling, and torque controlling at the same time. So basically, if you use torque control, you only are using this loop, this torque controller, and this one here, the direct current controller. If you're using speed controller, you're using a speed controller PI, the torque controller, and direct current controller. And of course, if you're using position controller, it will be cascaded into this diagram. So you will have the position controller commanding to the speed controller and a speed controller commanding to the torque controller. So the complexity of the design depends on uh, what types of, let's say, control algorithm you're using. The position profiling that we are offering and the velocity profiling in Gene are useful for speed control applications and position controlling applications that I'm going to explain later on. So the architecture of the position profile engine, based on what we saw earlier, will be like this. So the whole field oriented control architecture will remain as it was initially, with the only difference that right now, if you're considering only the position controlling, uh, let's say, architecture, 
The user input, which is coming here, goes into the engine, the speaker position profile generator engine, and that engine provides us the position reference for position controller. Beside that, it also provides a feed forward uh, output to kind of smoothen out the position controller output. So as a result, the user provides only a single target position to this engine, and this engine, at the end of the day, will take care of all the rest of the things to provide a very smooth transition from point A to point B, which is the target position of the user. The same applies when you are using DC brush motor. So you have the engine again in the same position. The user provides the uh, the target position, and the engine creates that uh, let's say profile based on the user input and the current position of the motor, and controls the position respectively. So in Solo, we are offering uh, two different types of stick curves. We are offering time optimal stick curve, which is basically defined based on the overall max values, for instance, maximum speed, maximum uh, taking off acceleration, landing acceleration, maximum takeoff jerk, and maximum landing and jerk. And then on the other side, you have the time-based SD curve that you define the, uh, the timings of the, each of these uh, segments that uh, later on I'm going to show you in practice inside the motion terminal how it works. So it depends on the user. If you care about timings strictly, you can use our time-based sticker, uh, let's say, algorithm. And if you are interested about the max values uh, and having more intuitive, uh, let's say, view toward the control, you can use the time-optimal version of it. Here, the, the most important part of it is this, that the fact that uh, the motion profile engine provides uh, 2,000 real points per second generated locally inside the controller for the position controller. And this can be increased up to 10,000 points. All of these points are real. And it has superior quality compared to conventional PVT methods because there is no interpolation involved. On the other hand, you can use uh, the sticker velocity profile engine for velocity controlling applications. If you are using velocity controlling applications, you basically are not having the position loop that was shown in previous uh, diagrams. So we are having only the speed controller and the torque controller and the direct current controller. And the velocity profile provides the references for the speed controller. So basically, the user sends the desired target speed that they want to go to. And the engine provides the references every single time that the controller is running until you have a very nice and uh, a smooth, let's say, transition from one speed to the other speed. So this was the diagram for the three-phase motors. The same applies for DC brush motors. The same engine is going to provide the references from the user to the controller. And uh, subsequently, you're going to control again here the speed very smoothly. In velocity profiling, we also have the same types of ST curve. So we have time optimal ST curves with strict max values for the whole profile. And we have time-based SD curves with uh, a strict timings for each segment. Same as position profiling. Again, in uh, speed profiling, we have 2,000 real points per second generated locally in the DSP. And this, again, provides the same superior quality compared to PVD methods for the same reason that there is no interpolation involved. Okay, to summarize all these points, I would say that the, the difference between what Solo is offering as, a, as an embedded profile generation engine compared to conventional PVT methods are basically these four points. So the first very important part is it only requires one point from the user. So you do not need to compute any other, uh, uh, let's say, plots or any other extra computation. The only thing that matters is the target position. There will be no interpolation between these points, and every point is purely and exactly generated locally at runtime. Uh, the data lines will be occupied much less because instead of sending hundreds or thousands of points, you only send one point and that's it. And basically, it needs very low or no programming skills because if you can just somehow send this target position using our tools or libraries that are very easy to use, you are ready to go and you don't need to program a very extensive library of motion profile generation.
So now I'm going to show you in action how this actually works in our motion terminal environment. So in motion terminal, which is our online software tool, if you go to tuning section, you have access to almost everything you will need to tune these profiles or select the type of the profile that you are going to use. For instance, here I can select between the step response and time-based speed curve and time-optimal speed curve for position mode. And then here I can tune all the parameters regarding each different profile. For instance, here I'm in time-optimal speed curve. I'm tuning the parameters. And here I'm going to have the plot that is generated based on those, let's say, tuned uh, parameters. So here I can have a look on the uh, the jerk profile, the acceleration profile, the velocity and position profiles all together as a result of uh, those computations and these settings. So once I'm having all these parameters set and the profile is what I actually want, I can simply test it here. So if here I set a desired position like 160,000 pulses for my motor, you can see in motion terminal, the motor is actually moving. I'm having this very nicely generated curve the speed and position feedbacks of the motor. So you can see these are the red position and the speed feedback from the motor. The position starts very nicely, takes off, and then lands very nicely on the target position. So it's very easy to tune these parameters. It's very easy to use it. I just provided only one single point. In future videos, we are going to show you exactly how you can tune for each of these specific profiles that I've mentioned, the parameters, what each of those parameters will mean. For your application and hopefully you can use them nicely in your applications. Thank you so much for watching us.